Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. To the west of the great continent of Kern lies the island provinces of Perth, home to brave seafarers, exotic pleasures, storms of swirling magical energy, and cults dedicated to the old gods. Upon these white sands came the Eve's Watch, a band of sellswords and brutes seeking their fortune upon the shores of these lands. Let me tell you of this age of legends, for I and I alone am keeper of their saga. This is their chronicle. Lovak, your name is called out by Kushim, no longer wearing the uniform of the Queen's Guard, but now in traditional Mashapurian garb. Tuko yells back, eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> Does that traditional garb include armor? It includes leather armor. Whatever you do, don't knock him off the bridge. We need to get his head and his hand. <laughs> I'm going to motion to everybody else the retreat. Are we still at initiative at this point or no? It depends on if you're going to continue to attack or if you're going to actively retreat. As he's yelling, are the, are the snake folks still moving into the woods or yes. have they stopped? No, they're still moving. Ku never moved backwards, so he's going to scoot back. Jill. And then we're at least falling back to the next point. We're not in full retreat, but Jill, falling back. Jill will fall back as well. And then gradually the snake people, they fan out, marching into the jungle, spears at the ready in front of them. I will not answer, Kashin. How far back are you going to retreat? Well, we'll try to keep the snake people in sight. We'll keep ret- retreating if they keep advancing. My understanding was 30 feet and shoot, 30 feet and shoot. So we should stay in initiative. Though the jungle is quite dense. So we might not have, you might not get a shot every time, right? right? So Mule would be up. I'll retreat 30 feet. Can I see any snake people? As you retreat deeper into the jungle, you can't see them well. Your vision is obscured, and but you can hear them moving through. You can hear the, the hissing, their language, a language you don't understand. You can read, Correct. but can you understand not, the spoken language? Not without casting a spell, which I'm not going to do currently. I fell back 30. I'm going to hold my action. I'm going to ready a spell. As soon as I see a snake person appear, I'm going to Eldritch Blast. Shin? Shin will retreat 60 feet, get behind a tree, and end my turn. <laughs> Pair of eights is Ku and Tuko. Ku? Ku will move 30 feet back. Approximately how... Did you count the... Would we count the 30 feet I just said before, or is this that 30 feet? That 30 feet. That 30 feet. So that would put him probably about 90 feet away? No, he'll go 60 feet. Everybody jump back, so he'll go a full 60 feet, hide behind a tree or a rock or whatever. Jill's leg. Next the to- snake people continue to press forward. Next is Tuco. Can he get a shot? You see the snake people, glimpses of them as they begin move, moving through the jungle towards you, their tongues flicking at the air, their eyes scanning, tongues constantly in motion, flicking at the air. So I can see one. Every time you've caught glimpses of them, that is what you've seen. The same thing with Mule. If you want to try to take a shot, you'll have it at a disadvantage. He will not try a shot, but he is standing right next to Lovak. And so he whispers over to him, they're going to try to get behind us. That's why we're backing up. Tuko did not take a shot. He goes 60 feet back. And that is Tuko, Lovak. I'll make, make sure everyone's behind me. Then I will back up as well. 30 feet, that's what keeps me in front of everybody else. And then I'm going to motion everyone to go push back again. We're going to move. I, I'm going to try to keep pushing them back for maybe a good 120 feet or so, and then stop and see if we're still pursued. They keep pressing forward, ever forward. As they're hissing, their language, is it close to draconic? No. Gio? Gio will back up to where Ku is at. Gio? This position that you're in, in the jungle, Gio, you know immediately that you will not be able to get a good swing off on your maul. It's just too dense. The trees are too tightly packed. The bushes are large and lush. I got it. The snake people keep pressing forward. Mule. I'm going to cast tongues, call on my patron to allow me to understand the speech of these creatures and to speak them in turn. Last for one hour. 
I can understand any spoken language I hear, and when I speak, any creature that knows at least one language and can hear me understands me. So I know okay. the snake people are still there. We'll still see them, you know, moving through. We can't yes. see enough to get a shot you can off. Hear them. But can I hear words now? Yes. I'll listen first. Are they saying anything in particular? They're saying, push them back, push them back. I'm going to call out to them, say, your master is lying to you. He has taken your home, forced you to serve against your will. Pushing us back only delays the inevitable, your eventual death. Give up and live, push forward and die. Intimidation check. 16. And then I move. There's still that. Push them back. Yep. Push them back. That's fine. I'm just trying to plant the seed. I'll slide back. 30 feet. Sheen? Sheen interacts with object, spins a flask of oil to the front, casts pressure <laughs> education, and spices it with cayenne pepper, regular pepper, something resembling a hey, heavy duty Indian flavor, and then just starts squeezing it until it's gone and then takes off back to everybody else. You were behind us already. No, I actually moved 30 feet. He's right in front of me. He's right be- in front of me between oh, me okay. and the snakes. I was the last one to leave the tree line. Just for clarity's sake, who are you right in front of? Lowback is right in front of me. I'm the next one in line. Who? Being up in a tree might not be a bad idea. Jill's right next to me, but separate me from the party. We don't know how many there are. Do I see any? You catch glimpses of them. I'll take a pot shot. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Be a 19. Roll your damage. Would I get sneak attack at all or no? Yes. They don't know really where you are. Mm. That'll be for uh, eight points of damage, and then I will take a 30-foot move back. One of them howls as your arrow finds its mark. Tuco sees this excellent pot shot through the middle of the woods, perhaps, and takes one of his own. Mm. That rolled two is not going to do it. And the rolled seven makes a 13. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Oh, the two. That is a miss. And then displaces backwards 30 feet. Geo. Jill moves back to where who is at. GM. How long are you going to continue to do this? Half an hour? Yeah. I mean, that or if we can come to a spot where I think everyone can find a defensible spot or a place where they can actually engage their weapons, I'm at some point going to pass the word back. Pair up. If we find an open spot where we can engage, now that they're spread out, we can take a, a couple pairs out at a time. But everyone pair up so you have someone with you. Jill and I are already together. Tuko. Tuko and Mule. We're starting to feel simpatico. And Shin's been right alongside of me pretty much within 30 feet of me the whole time anyway, so stay with me. The one area that you're certain will provide clear shots is that old farmhouse and the farm out there. That's a couple hours away, but you've already been doing this for a bit of time by the time your, your half an hour expires. But that will also provide them with a clear line of sight of you as well. Though there is a farmhouse which would provide cover, but that also means that it can be easily surrounded. Yeah, and that's not our target. We'd rather be out in the uh, jungle itself. It's just looking for a, a semi-open spot, a place where the vegetation quite isn't as large. Maybe a large tree came down, cleared it, and it's only starting to grow over. Something along those lines. We would have identified a spot after we, or even if it's on the, the trail itself. Yeah, something on the trail itself might be best anyway. Natural kind of clearing. I mean, with the knowledge that they could bring out their melee weapons to bear as well, but may also allow Geo some strike space. There is a spot some hour into your cat and mouse game that is less dense, but still quite dense. Providing ample cover, still difficult to get a shot, but less dense than any of the other areas that you've backtracked through. We get to the spot and we take our positions. I say, as long as you can take out two or three pairs, at that point, if it looks like we have to, let's back up because they do have us outnumbered. I'd rather draw them back out and stretch out their lines again and then find another defensible spot. And we'll just keep looking for spots like that as we back up. But this first one will be it. So the creatures come, these snake things. We will wait and ambush. And a good number of them enter into that somewhat clear, that less densely forested area, providing an ample view and the potential for a true shot. The other ones continue to fan out throughout the dense jungle, searching for you. That was GM? I'm sorry, was that the GM's turn? Uh, Next is Mule. So we're all in this clearing together? We're all in in positions in this less dense area. In this less dense area, but I wouldn't say we're all standing in a clump. Yeah, we're paired off. Yep. Okay. So, just want to clarify. You know, probably within what 
50, 40, 50 feet of each yeah, other. 40, probably. 50 foot and then like a triangle. Okay. Taking yeah. cover, I assume. Correct. Yes, is. Moving. All right, well, they've come within clear, so I do have a clear view, clearer than I had before. I don't want to reveal myself. <laughs> I don't want to be the first one that pops up to reveal myself, so I am going to cast... I'll cast Mind Sliver. It's not as flashy as Eldritch Blast. So I'll speak a few words and look at the <laughs> snake person and drive a disorienting spike of psychic energy into its brain. Intelligence saving throw, DC 14. That can't be their best stat. And what happens? You take some psychic damage. Eight points of psychic damage. And this is the one, if, if he makes a saving throw before the end of my next turn, he takes minus 1d4 to it. And if he doesn't make his saving throw? If he doesn't make it, he takes eight points. So okay. if he does make it, nothing happens. The creature gasps, <gasps> quite a scream, clutches at its head, dragging its clawed hands across its skull, almost trying to dig something out of its brain. All right, then we'll uh, give it a nod to go. Next is Shin. Shin will hold with the condition that I'm going to go after whoever Lovak does. You're holding your action. The two eights, the coup is first. Going up in a tree is probably a bad idea. I'm actually going to get behind Geo and hold action because he's going to rage i'm sure and i don't want to be in front of him but i want to <laughs> but i want to be as close to him as possible and support and flank i'll pop in my uh, refreshing tonic so he's so he feels refreshed and ready to go tuco uh standing next to mule sees one of the creatures grasping at its head and he knows mule so he's like oh that was you and he got the wink from mule as well am i hidden from sight yes so advantage Eight plus six, 14, 14, uh, dirty 20. And that's uh, sneak attack. D8 plus 3D6. No, D6 eight. plus 3D6. Correct. Six points. Plus two is eight. Plus five is 13. Plus one is 14 points of damage to the plus one that just deck. got the. Plus your deck. Plus, so 17 points of damage to the one that just got the mind sliver. And your arrow finds its mark true. Striking the creature between the eyes as it lifts its head up. Then I duck behind cover again. Lovak. I'm going to point to Shin which one I'm targeting. I'm going to use Sacred Flame. Ball of dark energy entwining a ball of white light falls from the sky. That's going to be a 13. That will miss. That will be immediately followed by a firebolt from Shin to the same target. 11. You're the luckiest snake person on the face of the earth. <laughs> Continues and to press on through the jungle. <clears throat> Miss. As a bonus action, I will put on another Shield of Faith, seeing as the first one went away 20 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Shield of Faith is up. Geo? Is he within 40 feet of me? Oh, yes. I'm going to rage and charge one. <laughs> and reckless attack. AC 22. I'll hit. For eight points. For my second attack. <clears throat> AC 15. That'll hit. For six more. You swing the hammer down over your head, knocking the creature to its knees, and then you knock its head from its shoulder with your second swing of your maul, killing it. And then there's a whoop. And then I get a roar. As they see their prey bellow back at them. GM, were you still holding her? Because you moved. I was. I'm going to move. Well, I still have my short bow or any visible. Yes, they're starting to move into that relatively clear area. Okay, so I'm going to take a shot at one of them. Am I at advantage or disadvantage? Um, or regular? Regular. So a short bow. That'll be a 20 for eight points of damage. And then Ku is going to get up to uh, with Jill. Now it's Jill. Seeing Jill out in that somewhat clear area, several of the snake things move in menacingly with their spears, cautiously menacing, making jabbing motions in Jill's direction. They move in and they begin to circle Geel. They get advantage, I remember that. You can stop rolling now. (laughs) You got nothing to worry about. There are nine of them that surround you. If they're surrounding him, then are they completely surrounding him? Yes, they've encircled him. Well, I'm directly behind him. Just let you know. <laughs> he just nods his head yeah. and smiles. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Welcome to the party. One of them hits Geo with a net 20 for eight points of damage. 
jabbing its spear into your thigh, trying to take your legs out. And another one, with a sweeping motion of his spear, grazes it across the back of your leg and takes three points of damage. They're hissing and their tongues are flicking. Yellow eyes are glaring at Jill. Mule. Jill has attracted to Cluster. He's a ways away. Uh, are there any closer to Tako and I that are still coming out? Oh, there's, there's still, still coming. Plenty. Still plenty. All right. I will say, I warned you. Eldritch Blast on the closest one. Uh, that's a 19 and a 12. So I assume the 19 hits. The 19 will hit. Nine points of force damage. Eldritch Bolt finds its mark, striking the creature. It hisses and glares in your direction, not seeming to see you, but begins crouching low and moving towards you. Shin? I have, my, I have moved. I held. He's so I am now going with... You should be at low back. Yeah, we're going together okay. now. Let me adjust, make that adjustment. Thank and, you. and adjust me to being with Jill <clears throat> and having Jill go first. So who goes to... Uh, do you need a moment to rewrite your initial sheet? <laughs> nope, I do not. He's got a system. I got a system. So if Shin is not going and Ku is not going, Tuko is going. Ah, good. Our actions are back to back. Popping up from cover, taking a shot at the same one that just got hit with the Eldritch Blast. The four is not going to do it. 16. 16 will hit. I had advantage because I was hidden. You get sneak attack if, if there's an ally within five feet or you have advantage. Correct. And their vision seems very poor. 17. 17, 17 points of damage with that arrow. You pop out from behind cover, shoot your bow, dip back, back to the tree. Arrow finds its mark between the eyes of the snake thing that Mule attack. His head jerks back violently and he falls dead. Pop back behind cover. From a rules perspective, I believe you should use your bonus action to, to do hide because that is there for that reason. Because if they beat your hide at their perception, then you're not hidden and therefore you don't get advantage. Thank you. I use my bonus action to hide. And uh, just, so you, you roll stealth because then their per passive perception or if they actively try to perceive you and see you, you're no longer hidden. Therefore, no. Plus eight sneak attack. Eight plus eight is a 16 on my hide. That was me there. So the pair of sevens is Lovac and then his partnership. I'm going to go out there, attack somebody, see if I can draw some of them away from Jill. Stay hidden, do support, and just keep picking them off when they turn their back or the ones around the periphery that we're not engaged in direct combat. We'll do. Cast Shield of Faith and charge out to the one that's out there. They're clustering around Jill, then I'll charge up in that direction. I'm not going to go much more than like 40, 50 feet. Well, we're all within 40 feet anyway, so. I mean, you can only move 30 and still attack. Yeah, I'm only so. 30, right. So I'll move 30. So that way, as it, I want to still be in the area of effect of anything that Chin has, and I will attack the first one I come to. They are. The clusters, nine of them clustering around Jill, and but there's still some more that are coming through that not so dense area, mm -hmm. finding a target. I mean, it's a target rich environment. Target rich environment. Uh, let's say 24 to hit. That'll hit. And that's going to be 11 point damage. Second attack. Uh, I cast this spell. You bonus action. Oh, that's right, too. Yeah, it's a bonus action. Correct. Thank you for getting it. It's a bonus action. Thank you. You're welcome. I like it when Jared's here. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 15 to hit. That'll hit. And that's another 7 points damage. You draw your sword across its chest with a backhanded motion and a spin. You take its head from its shoulders. But there is another to take its place. Shin? The ones we were targeting, are they heading towards following Lovac? Or are they still just advancing, checking everything out? Most are advancing. Then I'm going to go for the same target we pointed out last time. Aha! Now that one's a 22. That'll hit. That's 11. 11 points? Yep. And what are you hitting it with, Shin? I'm, I'm going to be casting Firebolt entirely. You cast Firebolt. It strikes one of the creatures in the belly, clutches at his belly, and falls forward. Now will take a quick look over to make sure that Lovac is still good. If he hasn't gotten more than 30 feet away from me, I'm going to stick my position. He's not necessarily good out there in the semi-open, attracting a lot of attention. But he still looks quite animated. He's grinning widely. He's good. Next is our pair of twos, Ku and Jill. Jill's gonna attack the first one. That'll be a miss, but a seven. And then the second one, second attack, AC 20. AC 20 will hit. For nine. You don't have to roll disadvantage. I wasn't, I was rolling just... with advantage because of reckless attack. Oh, reckless attack, I see. 
for uh, nine points, you said? For nine. So the one in front of you, you shove back with your maul, driving the uh, head of the maul up under its chin, knocking it back so you can get some reach on him. Ku will then attack any of them that are within five feet of himself and Jeel. There are many. That is a 13, that'll miss. And then he's going to do a flurry of blows. There was a 22 and a 17. Both will hit. First one is with sneak attack. That'll be 11 points of damage. Okay. And the second one, does that take out the first target or no? No. No, second one on the same target. Uh, for four. You only got sneak attack on one attack. You're right. My bad. Uh, so rolled a three there, so it'd be uh, six. Uh, so six points of damage. Total of 17, correct? Correct. You take him down to your level by a knee strike. The thing drops to both knees, and you're now face to face with it. So you work over the thing's face, spinning backhand, cracks its neck, and it falls dead at your feet. And I look at the nearest one and I say telepathically into its head in common, don't know if it'll understand me, <laughs> the blue guy needs a new pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> Intimidation, it does it, first does it understand me? Yes. Intimidation, nat 20, so for a total of 27. That one drops its spear and beats feet. Geo attack of opportunity. Do I get attack of opportunity? No, that one is behind you. You are unaware. You don't have line of sight on. GM. Jill, you are hit with one nat 20 for five points of damage and struck again for another one point. <laughs> what? You, you I don't want you I don't want two natural 20s against him. Yeah, but my damage sucks. So I don't want you sitting next to me ever again, Frank. Otherwise, we would have flipped it off with both hands. You sure about that, Scott? No. <laughs> there. They're whittling you down, it seems. Coo, very slowly. They clumsily start poking and jabbing at the ground, trying to strike you, but you were able to. It's kind of a silly dance, standing on your tiptoes to avoid a spear tip, sucking it in and making yourself smaller dipping in between two spears, but none of them seem to find their mark. These rolls suck. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, fellow d and My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons and Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind the curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d20tocurtain.com or at d 20 to Curtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. Next is the duo of Moulet and Tuco. So they're still they're still coming on, huh? Still they're advancing? St they're still advancing. I will say. How many more of you must die before you turn, flee, go back to your homes, leave this place? Eldritch Blast on the nearest one. Crackling Bolt of Energy, that is a natural 20. 21. 17 points of force damage. <laughs> to the nearest one. And these are uh, Eldritch, Eldritch Blasts. Blast. Yeah, that was two two blasts for a total of 17. Your Eldritch Blasts find their mark, that crackling cosmic mm -hmm. energy. And for a moment, you can see it rippling across the teeth of this creature as its mouth is open and a silent cry drops to its knees, staring at where it suspects you are and then falls flat. Another one falls. How many more will it be? Tuco turns to Moulet and says, Stop telling them to run away uh, as he pops out from the other side of the tree to send an arrow into the oncoming. It was 18 plus 6 and 18 plus 6. So either one of those would be fine. 22 points of damage to one of the oncoming snake people. One of these snake things breaks off and starts walking towards Lovak with its spear arm raised. It stops, cocks the arm back, ready to launch its spear at Lovak's back, and then an arrow hits it in the side of the head. The head jerks awkwardly to one side, 
and it falls. And Tugo tries to fade back into the forest yet again with his bonus action. 19 plus 8. I'm pretty sneaky. So that's Tuko. Our pair of sevens is Lovak and Shin. I will raise my sword, feign a strike to one side, then lash out at a 90 degree angle to try to catch them unaware. First attack is a 20, dirty, and second attack is a 16. Both will hit. That's going to be for 16 points of damage. You faint to one side, a big grin on your face as you're doing so, like a proper psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Draw your sword across the back of its leg, spin around behind it, back to back with it, and plunge your sword into its back. The sword bursts through its belly on the other side. You yank it out and flick a splatter of blood on the matted down plants. Quickly turn my head to the one next to him. Surprise. You're still good. <laughs> <laughs> so the next closest one to me is getting a firebolt. 13. 13 will miss. Firebolt barely missing him as it whizzes past the thing's head, striking a tree. That's all I'm doing. The duo of Jill and Koo is up. Jill attack the next one. DC 12 is going to miss. Second attack and yell, we need to do something. <laughs> DC 21. That'll hit. For 11. Knock another one back with your maul, striking it hard in the chest. There's a puff of air, then it redoubles its effort, it's moving back in to encircle you and Ku. Ku will then strike at the nearest one that's within five feet of myself and Geo with my dagger. That is a 22. That'll hit. Seven points of damage. And then Flurry of Blows. I'm gonna reroll the natural one with the halfling ability lucky. I have a pair of 22s for eight points of damage. You drive your dagger into the thing's thigh. You attempt the tried and true nut shot. Apparently they don't keep their testicles in the same place as you and I do, but it is an effective attack because a kick, no matter where, is going to hurt. And the follow-up punch and kicks also are uncomfortable. Ku will then look to the nearest unscathed one and say telepathically in common into its head, the blue guy needs a new belt. 25 intimidation. And that one drops its spear and runs. Jill is scaring off all of these opponents. <laughs> <laughs> GM is up. The snake things begin to fan out and then they begin to slowly come together to take that half moon formation and begin to close it into a circle surrounding the area that you're holed up in. More snake things begin to fill that trample down area where Geo, Ku, and Lovak are. Lovak, you are attacked. Spears being thrown. Spears jabbing at you. Sword with a curved, wicked looking blade slashing at you. You're parrying and spinning and knocking blades aside, but none of them strike you. The laughter continues. <laughs> <laughs> I still have attack with disadvantage, right? Advantage. 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 That's right. Advantage. That's correct. Not good. <laughs> no, this was a good one. This is four nat 20s. Seriously? Yes. Two nat 1s. Well, 62 dice eventually one's going to up. Let me know what each one does to damage. This one does nine points. I use stones endurance. <laughs> what is that? As a reaction, reduce damage dealt to you by 1d12 plus 3 once per short rest. That was nine damage, you said? Yes. I rolled 11, so I take no damage from that. I thought it was 1d12. Oh, <laughs> shit, that isn't. <laughs> Cheating ass motherfucker. Same number. Same number. <laughs> <laughs> Another attack for seven points, one for nine, and then finally one for 12 points of damage as they lunge in, thrusting. Spear tips finding their mark all over Jill's body. He's bleeding from multiple wounds. There's a rallying cry. Oh, there's one for me too. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> After GM is the pair of Mule and Tuco. Just keep coming. When will you learn? Say in a voice that they can all understand still. Keep coming and just more and more of your people die. Every snake man that falls wants to keep your race going. Eventually there will be none of you. I'll be extinct because you were 
too proud or too subservient to fall back. Two hundred blasts at the uh, nearest. Well, he's yeah. talking a lot of shit. <clears throat> That's a miss and a 23. 23 will hit. Seven points of force damage. Not as impressive of a blast that time. And one of them that was already wounded drops. Tuco has noticed the circle enclosing, and he is going to aim his fire at the path of our escape if he can see anybody in that direction or anybody in that arc. In that direction, are there visible combatants? They appear and disappear in the jungle. So then anybody in the clearing or in the semi-clearing in that direction? There's a lot of people in the clearing. Well, I'll just shoot somebody. (laughs) (laughs) Popping out from cover. Mm, That's an 11. That's not going to do it. Attempting to find some slight cover in this jungle again with a 16 for stealth. Tuco is behind a leaf. (laughs) (laughs) Now we have our pair of low back and shin. I'm going to throw a a glance towards Jeel's just to see how he's doing. Jeel looks battered. He's going to call out, Shin, help Jeel if you can. And then I'm going to spin quickly and attack the ones behind me. First attack's going to miss. Second attack is a 25. That will hit. For eight points. That one goes down. And I'm going to begin singing a song. You know, one of those songs they teach you, you know, when you first join the Eve's Watch. It's like one of those marching songs, you know, kind of like the, the rally of the troops and, you know, that kind of deal. It's just one of those songs that everyone knows, but it just kind of has a thing. And I, But I'm going to sing it with such a happy and joyous tone because I really am enjoying myself. And Lovac breaks into song <laughs> as he's battling it out in this now quite clear area because all the vegetation's been stamped down with bodies falling on it and boots crushing it as he's it's as if he's in a tavern drinking and singing and having a great time and all the while the pinchers are closing chill should be only 30 35 feet away correct if you're still in your original position yeah. i think we said 45 feet okay that's well, still within range so we'll start with healing word for seven points of healing healing word is d4 i believe unless you have something special but it can't be amped Hold on. What's it? It can be amped up. Oh, right. If you use higher, higher level. Yeah. if you use higher spell slots, it's but it's multiple D fours. It's never D eight. Uh, just call that six. Then instead of the seven, I then move thirty feet closer to them, which puts me within fifteen feet. And in the clearing. It's okay. At which point I will cast Cure Wounds at third level with a sorcery point, so it has a distance of thirty feet. You can't do that. You can only cast two spells in a, in a round if one of them is a cantrip. Yes, one of them was. Oh no. Healing word is not a cantrip. Bonus action. It was a bonus action. Okay. Correct. So you could cast firebolt, but you cannot cast. Firebolt won't help me. Well, you if cast... you kill someone, it will. I have a question about Shin's firebolt from earlier. Firebolt, when it hits anything that that can catch fire, combustible. that is combustible, it would it will catch fire. So the firebolt that missed earlier and hit a tree. Three. Did it? It's a damp jungle. Okay. Yeah, you get frequent rains. So, Shin, does that complete your turn? He's no, digging. I'll firebolt one in front of him. That's within range. That's a uh, 22. That hits two. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of wounded on the field. They're still pressing D- forward. D times. 10. D times. Wrong dice. Wrong dice. <laughs> it's, 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 I got it's, them right next to it's you. An epi- they both have points on them. <laughs> it's an epidemic today. <laughs> Been a long nice way. rolls. Nine. That's a sixteen. As one moves in, as Geel is holding his maul out in front of him defensively, and there is a downward swipe towards Geel's wrist. The intent probably to lop it off so he can't swing his maul, and then a fireball whizzes by, catching the creature in the mouth and blowing out the back of its head. Force splatters on Lovac's back. You can feel just a little bit of wetness. As you're singing your song and swinging your sword wildly, another enemy's been taken off the battlefield. Does that end your turn, Shin? Yes. Next is our duo of Jeel and Ku. Just a quick rough estimate that still tons of them in front of us or around us. They're coming, yeah. Little reckless attack again. Attack, attack one of the wounded ones. Yep, and, but this time I'm yelling for Shin to, and I'm going to hate saying this, fog the area. <laughs> <laughs> AC 25. That'll hit. For 10. That was to a wounded one. Smite him. I'll go for my second attack. Crushing his head. 
with a natural 20, you're a great weapon. No, you always get that. I was actually looking at that. It says if you announce it, though, for the minus five. No. Oh, for the bonus attack. For the bonus attack. I thought he was talking about something else. Correct, yeah. You always get the bonus attack. You score a critical or drop something to zero. I I forgot about that. Yep. But you just scored a critical. Yeah, just rolled a critical (laughs) anyway. Seems Jill's rallying. Yep. Well, maybe he'll drop a second and attack a third. 21. 21 hits. No, that's the damage. Oh, 21 <laughs> <the> damage? <laughs> it's a crit. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> so now I use my bonus action because yep. that was my second attack. Yep. With another natural 20. Nice. Oh. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> well, you keep I'm hitting him with natural 20s. That's a tip for dad. Uh, you got three nat 20s with like 10 guys. Uh, he's one guy. Got <laughs> 26. Oh. And that's the damage. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> One great swing from his maul takes out the first one, crushing his head. The second sweeping swing picks the other one off his feet, sending him off into the jungle. And like a farmer cutting wheat, another backhanded swing takes another one off his feet. In this both sickening and and almost comical fashion, it spins in the air, limbs all splayed out awkwardly, and lands by Lovac, who erupts in laughter. And I just keep yelling, sing it! <laughs> <laughs> Ku will attack the nearest one. That is a 15. 15 will hit. And it's at within sneak attack range. Is there somebody yeah. up? Yeah. Everybody's in sneak okay. attack range now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that'll be nine points of damage. And then Floria blows. And I have a 13, which will miss, and a dirty 20. The unarmed is five points of damage. For a grand total of? 14. Ku will then yell out, not telepathic or anything, will actually yell out to the snake people and say, the blue guy wants a new pair of snakeskin clothes. (laughs) Intimidation check. (laughs) I am going to use my halfling ability to reroll that. (laughs) And I have a 22 intimidation. Another one battlefield. Timing was impeccable. Is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn. GM is up. Lovac is attacked. Clumsy attacks moving in. As he's singing his song gleefully, he's almost dancing as he swats away the spears and the swords, parrying and spinning, and at one point, even pirouetting. <laughs> Her name is Mary. She's a little hairy. Don't you tarry if you want some love. And now he's just making shit up because he ran out of he ran out of soldiering songs to sing. Koo, you are attacked. Melee or ranged? Melee. That's disappointing. 18 hits? Yes, an 18 hits. And the next 20 hits? Yeah, well, of course, nat 20 hits. Four, <laughs> four points on the nat 20, and an eight. Ouch. 18. Two of the spearmen get you pinned up against the back of Jeel's leg, so you have very little maneuverability and thrust their spears into you. You twist your body to avoid fatal blows, but are still struck. Maybe I'll just roll until I hit. <laughs> we thought you were. Jill, your enemy's resolve seems to be wavering after the crushed head and the flying bodies and begin slashing wildly at you, swinging their spears, poking and jabbing, but you were able to knock their attacks aside with the, the handle of your maul. Because we all need a pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> and the pinchers close. And that's where we'll leave it for this week. Join us every other week as the Eves Watch continue their adventures in Perth. Thank you to our patrons. Find us on Patreon to join the executive producers team and support the podcast. Our cast, Bill Robitaille, Louis Aponte, Frank Whedon, Jared Parker, Marcus Holt, Sin Morse, our DM, Scott, and me, Nova. Thank you, our listeners for joining us every other week.